welcome to Real Life Women's Ministries. I'm Dr. Vanessa Ellen, and I am so glad that you stopped by my channel. Listen, we do a lot of things here. We do a lot of things like cooking, conversations, but right now we're doing a series called Coffee with My Pastor's Wife, and I have a great guest today. Sister Andrea is here with us, and we're going to be talking about this, that, and the other, everything <laughs> that she comes up with. I started this segment of real life because I wanted to give space for ladies to, in my church to be able to talk to me, to ask questions. Cause sometimes, you know, you may feel like, man, I'd really like to get to know my pastor's wife, but maybe she feels unapproachable. She's probably not, but maybe you don't know how. So we're going to kind of just demonstrate how to get to know your pastor's wife over a cup of coffee, or in this case, coffee and hot chocolate. Taste it. Let's see what you think. That's really good. Yeah, that's that good. is um, better than what I normally do. It's really good. <laughs> so she doesn't drink coffee. So I took and made, I forget what they call it when you mix coffee and hot chocolate. Anyway, let me see. Mm. Actually is quite good. It's your new favorite drink. I know. My new hottie. All right. So we have questions today. But before we get to that, Andrea, tell the ladies a little bit about how long have you been in the church? Where do you serve? Different things like that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I have been at Community of Faith Bible Church for a long time. <laughs> uh, hung around for a while, you know, uh, took some time to check it out before I actually committed. Became a member in uh, February of 2012. So yeah. it's been 10, 10 years. Yeah. Um, I've served um, in the visual ministry and in the finance ministry. Yeah, I think you made a very important Point that maybe we should not pass up so fast. You checked out the church, not necessarily in terms of what we call dating the church, where you just go and you've been there for 10 years and the pastor doesn't even know you're there, but kind of elaborate on why it is important to kind of investigate a church according to what you understand the Bible to be saying. Sure. So um, what I've noticed um, as I was going through the process and checking out different churches, a lot of people put what they believe online. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it looks straight. It looks correct according to the Bible. And then right. you kind of show up in person, you start to realize, okay, well, so maybe they say this, but in practice, it's really more yeah. like this. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've had some experiences in the past with churches yeah. and I wanted to make sure that what was being said was actually the case and, um, yeah. took a little time to do that. But then once I, I could see that was the case, I, I felt comfortable and was ready to commit. Yeah. And I don't think that any church is perfect by any means. No. So if you're looking for a church home, know that you got to take the good with the bad, you know, I mean, because we are uh, still clothed in flesh, have this indwelling sin issue, right? Every church, I think, is going to have something that you're not going to love, but you should like more than you dislike. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think for the most part, there were certain things that were important to me. Um, our church uh, follows, you know, what the Bible has to say about, um, discipline yeah. and about discipleship. And uh, there were just some key things for me that I knew based on what I'd experienced in the past that I was not willing to do without. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the non-negotiables exactly. for sure. Yeah. Amen. Well, welcome to real life. Thank you. Uh, I hear you have questions now. I don't know what the questions are. So we're going to see. I've got a lot of questions, All right. but I've narrowed it down a little bit. Let's so. go. So what's your topic for today? So I wanted to talk to you about the sanctification process. Ooh. Everything that I might want to talk to you about sanctification or that maybe other people would like to ask their church okay. leaders, their, their right. pastor's wife about. So my first question was, uh, what exactly is sanctification? You hear it in the okay. Bible. You hear people talk about it a lot at church. They throw this word around, but what does that even mean? Yeah, I think before we can get there, maybe we should drop back to the first S word. <laughs> no, ladies, not submission. <laughs> but I didn't come here and talk about that. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about that. Uh, salvation, because I think you can't get to sanctification without salvation. So first, I want to say salvation is placing your faith and confidence in Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ, that he lived, he died, he rose, and he's coming back. And if you put your faith and confidence in him, then you have eternal life with him. And that's the very first part. But see, that takes care of eternity. But what about the right now? So I think sanctification fits in the right now. Because there's a whole lot of things in the Bible that cause us to um, have to learn some things, to grow up some things. It's, it's the putting off and putting on process. So before I was saved, salvation, I did what I wanted, when I wanted, how I wanted, and with whom I wanted. Yeah, can't do that <laughs> once you get saved. That's what Amen. I'm saying. 
<laughs> say what I said. Uh, so once you get saved, there is a way that God is calling you to live. And it's mm -hmm. a life of righteousness. Um, you're an image bearer. You're supposed to live according to the way that he would call you to live. That's sanctification, meaning you grow up in Christ. That's a whole pruning, shaping, molding, making process where you're becoming more like Christ day by day. Perfection is impossible right. and unattainable. However, we're being perfected day by day. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because um, in thinking about sanctification, <clears throat> it comes after salvation. Yes. Salvation is Christ alone, faith alone, in Christ alone, yes. by grace alone. alone. Alone, alone, alone. Alone, alone, alone. Full stop. Yeah. But then after that, we have sanctification. And Paul talks about yeah. in Philippians how uh, we're supposed to, to work out our yeah. salvation with fear and trembling. But then also it is the Lord who wills and works in you. Oh, How does that yes. fit together? Okay, so this is real good stuff here. But sometimes it's kind of hard for us to completely understand. And I don't know if we yeah. ever will completely yeah. understand. I think there is the responsibility of man mm -hmm. and the sovereignty of God. You know, the two of them kind of go whoop, together and that's how you work that out. So there is the responsibility of man. I am supposed to put off the things of old. I've become new. I'm supposed to now walk in righteousness, explore the Bible. What does he say about being a woman? What does he say about being a single? What does he say about being a wife? What does he say about being a child of God? And begin to learn how to do those things. However, the sovereignty of God in his providential care for me leads me and guides me along the way of sanctification. The Holy Spirit touches my heart, convicts me of sin, right? Then there's the responsibility. I'm supposed to respond to that conviction with confession and repentance, and then they work together. Does that make sense? <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. Um, so for somebody who is new to this, yeah. why? Why sanctification? What is our motivation for mm -hmm. pursuing more? We yeah. have our salvation. Mm -hmm. We're, we skated by, we yeah. got into heaven. What, why? Why all this extra stuff if, if we don't need it to get to heaven? Right, right. Yeah, that's important. Uh, there's a difference between religion and relationship. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people are happy with their ticket, their fire insurance. I'm going to heaven. But really and truly, I don't think it's really necessarily about going to heaven. I think mm -hmm. it's a relationship with a person. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as a byproduct of that relationship, now I get to spend eternity with him. Yeah. That's eternity. Sanctification is as a result of this relationship with this real person. Man, do I want to get to know him? Do I want to live for him? Do I want to uh, be what he would have me to be? So my desire now is to please him, to glorify him. That's why. I put off the old and put on the new because now I'm in this new relationship and I want to be pleasing unto the father now sure. versus pleasing myself, which is what I did pre-Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I was doing most of my life until I got saved, pleasing me. So sanctification is because he loved me first. As you said, Christ alone, by faith alone, because he loved me and I put my faith in that. Now I want to grow up. I was talking to pastor a couple of weeks ago and he said, um, if I care about you mm -hmm. and I know something that I does hurts you, yeah. how much am I going to want to do that thing? Yeah. And, and I, that kind of stuck out to me. Um, it really is about relationship and it kind of makes it different between worldly sorrow yeah. where, oh, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, I can't believe I got caught. Versus... Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. you know, well, you know when you hurt somebody you really care about um, and you want to make that right, you want to yeah. restore that relationship. So that's yeah. the difference. I mean, because we could go into this saying, okay, so I'm sealed uh, right. according to the Bible. Right. Nothing can pluck me out of his hand. But then there's that little verse that says, if you really love me, you'll, you'll keep my commands. my commands. So see, I think you can't get around salvation or, or the sticky one in Hebrews that says there is a, a uh, righteousness or holiness apart from which you mm. will not see God. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's one that says, examine yourself to see if, if you are in the faith. As many of you fail the test. 
So what is that test? If somebody, you know, you don't want people to be neurotically yeah. just yeah, yeah, re, yeah. re-crucifying Christ right. in their mind. Oh, am I really saved? Do yeah. I need to believe on him again? Do I need to get baptized again? Yeah. What does it mean to really just examine yourself and see if you're in the faith? You know what? My desires. Here's the thing. Because we have been sealed with the power of the Holy Spirit within us, I should now, if I'm truly a believer, I should desire him. Mm-hmm. I should desire a relationship with him. I should desire not to offend him, as you said earlier. I should desire to be a part of his structure, right? Perfectly, no, I understand that as a human, I'm still clothed in this flesh with this indwelling sin, so I'm never gonna get it perfect, only Christ was perfect, but I should desire, my desires are different now. So, if you're examining yourself, you see you have some desire, but then you see that you fall. How do you handle when you Ah, fall? I run to 1 John 1 and 9. (laughs) If you are, uh, faithful to, if you confess your sins before he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. See, this is what I love about Christianity is that he knew we would sin. So he stuck that right in there for us. Right. He's right. not um, a father who doesn't understand his children. Mm. He understands our weaknesses. He understands our limitations, but he also has a standard. That's a whole word right there. (laughs) Um, All right. So um, how do we as Christians resist temptation? What has God given us to resist? Yeah. Well, one, the power within you is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Just can you even just, I don't even understand that. Mm -hmm. That concept just, it escapes my mind. Like I've I've got power, you know? (laughs) And then, of course, pride is like, I've got power. (laughs) All right. But the power of the Holy Spirit is within me. I like the scripture that says that he will make a way of escape for you. But you see, he's such a kind God. He doesn't force me to take the way of escape. So when um, I fall, is it that I uh, did not take the way that God did prepare for me? Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. my choice. Mm -hmm. Remember, man's responsibility and God's sovereignty. Here we go, running head into head into them again. He is not the kind of father who's going to make you obey. He will not obey for you and he will not make you obey. Mm -hmm. But he has been so kind to give you everything you need to obey. We have a choice. We choose. That's a heavy responsibility, especially when you want to please God. But your flesh is fighting you and some of us are in different points of mortifying the flesh, fighting back the flesh and training it in obedience to Christ. It's... But see, that's sanctification. And I think you hit it on the head. It's training. So what comes with training? I mean, I think you need to get into a good local church. I think you need to get some accountability and you need to get in the word. You need to know the word for yourself. Hide it in your heart so that you don't sin against him. Um, You fall less and less as you grow. That means you've got to plant yourself into some good fertile soil, like a good church home, a good Mm -hmm. pastor that's teaching the word from the Bible. Otherwise... I feel like you'll fall more and more. Sure. Um, So uh, in talking about the sanctification process and everything that's involved in that, um, how important is your faith community around Mm. you in this this path, this process of sanctification? Well, I think it's absolutely important. One, because uh, as our pastor always says, in Christ, they're not only children. Okay. The hand can't say to the eye that I have no need of thee. We need each other. We, uh, uh, what is it? Ecclesiastes that talks about, uh, the traveler going on along on the road, how it's helpful to have someone there with you so that when you fall, there's someone to help you come along. Your local community is so important because one, um, there are times when we just doubt. Mm -hmm. There's times when we just hurt. Definitely. There's times when we are so fearful that if left to our own selves, we would probably tell ourselves all types of detrimental things. The verse that comes to my mind is talking about don't forsake the assembling of the saints so that we can encourage one another day by day. I think your question gets to the heart of what's important about the local church. What's important important about having the fellowship of believers. I can get so hardened in this sin sick world If you don't come along and say, hey, snap out of it. (laughs) There's hope in Jesus Christ. This is a dying world. This is not your home. You are a sojourner passing through. You know, if there's not someone who comes along and helps me 
to walk out my faith, I may tell myself anything. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think that's super important. Um, we can really tell ourselves a lot of things that are untrue. We can um, convince ourselves that we're right in the things yeah. that we're thinking, the things yeah. that we're doing. Um, and uh, we can have a lot of blind spots sometimes that we don't even see. Yeah. But if we really are around each other and we really do love each other, yeah. then somebody can show us where we are um, missing the boat on something, where we're not seeing, maybe where we're vulnerable, yeah. where we're weak, where we need encouragement, where we need to hear the gospel again. Yeah. We never get away from needing the gospel yeah. every single day after we're saved. Yeah, that's an important Point because I don't think we get saved and then forget about the gospel, no. which is the good news of Jesus Christ and the life that he lived and the life he's calling us to live. Because every day we wake up with new mercies. Absolutely. Every day Absolutely. we have new opportunities to serve him, to love him, to glorify him. Mm -hmm. I need to be reminded, why am I doing that? It was the blood. Absolutely. I, I love the old Baptist preachers used to say, you know, amazing grace is no longer amazing for some of us. We've forgotten about the blood that was shed. Mm -hmm on our behalf, how it ran down, how they pierced him in his side, how they beat him and crucified him greatly. But we won't crucify our flesh. We won't put our sins asunder, but we say, I'm a Christian. Yeah. And all of those are so important, but I want to throw a little bit in here. Let's kind of close it up, like close the loop. Salvation, sanctification, and then glorification. You know, one day, one day, as my grandmother then will say, we were going to the land of no, no more. Mo. Ah! No more pain, no more sorrow, no more anything. But the reality is that we get to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. Now, there's a whole lot of end time stuff. Go ask your pastor about all of that. I'm not jumping into all of that, but I'm just saying glorification is important. I know for me, when I get there, I want to really do. I don't want it to be a cliche thing. Uh, people always say, I want to hear him say, well done. No, I really mm. do want to stand before our Lord and be able to say, thank you for what you did. And he says, well done. You followed my instruction book, the Bible. Not perfectly, because you cannot. You're not me. But what would you say to a lady hearing all of this? What would you say to a young lady, a young single lady, who's like, yes, okay, salvation, I believe. I believe in the finished work in Christ alone, you know, by faith alone. It's not by works. Mm -hmm. I get that. I understand that. But I am really struggling. Mm. What would you say to her to encourage her heart? I, I'd tell her what I tell myself. Um, if you are in Christ, you are free. Ooh. Shout! And what are you gonna do with that freedom? I, same as you, when I stand before him, I think about this all the time, when I stand before him, I know there, there's gonna be some experience of sorrow. Yes. Because I haven't always chosen to honor him and love him the way yes. he deserves in all my choices, but more and more, I want to demonstrate my love for him because he's loved me so well. I mean, there is not another being alive who has seen me as I truly am and has gone to that length mm. to uh, save me, to rescue me, to love me, mm. to redeem me, mm. to purify me. Huh. It just doesn't exist. Huh. The love of my life. And, mm. and do I want to give him all? I want to give him all. So that's what, what I would say is consider that you're going to stand before your Savior who loves you. And now is the time that you have to, to take that opportunity to give him all. Mm. Not because you have to, because you want to, because yeah. he's so worthy. He's so good and he's so deserving of it. So just keep, keep the um, reality that we are going to be with him very, very soon. Mm. And now is the time that we have the opportunity to make those choices. And God has given us everything that we need in the indwelling Holy Spirit, in the power of his word mm. to follow his commands. Because if we love him, we'll follow his commands. Mm. If you need, uh, not if, you need, like yeah, I need. Yeah other believers around you telling you the same thing, pointing out, hey, how about this in this area? Or, hey, have you considered this? Or, oh, please read the, the, this passage here. It could really encourage you or it could really show you something. We need that so badly. Take advantage of the brothers and sisters God's put around you to help spur you on toward that day. Yes. That's what we're all trying to do is encourage each yes. other to make it to that day mm -hmm. and be able to hear, well done, well my son. Because we're his servants. We want to yeah. be faithful servants instead of out here 
living our best life now and just, yep. you know, doing what we want to do. And then, oh my goodness, the loss we would suffer for living for self instead of living for Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, as they say, hmm, that'll preach. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been a great time. Now, listen, listen, please, please, please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we go live with other great conversations. And listen, leave us some comments. Let's start a dialogue about this. I mean, maybe you don't have anyone that you can ask about sanctification. I don't have all the answers, and I'm probably going to send you back to your pastor, but hey. Let's get the conversation going, all right? Leave a comment for us and let us know. Hopefully, we pray, we pray that this has blessed you. Yeah. And if you know someone else struggling with sanctification, please share. Share this video with someone. All right, I'm Dr. Vanessa Ellen. This has been Coffee with My Pastor's Wife. See you next time.